What's up team? So this video is mainly an introduction to waste gates and how they operate. And as an added bonus, we will look at the latest waste gate technology. This tech is so new that it won two awards at the SEMA show this year for innovation and engineering. But before we jump into waste gates, I just want to give a brief overview of how turbo systems work and where the components are placed, just so we are all on the same page. First, we have our internal combustion engine. And because of that combustion part, we have a byproduct called exhaust. And that exhaust has mass and acceleration, which are the components needed to make force. Now in a non-turbo engine, that force just comes out of the tailpipe. But in a turbo system, we use that force to make more power. And how that works will be another video. For wastegates, they are here in the exhaust piping. Notice that the exhaust out of the engine will reach the wastegate before it reaches the turbo. And from there, I will let Richard take over and explain how it works. What's going on guys? My name is Richard from TurboSmart USA. I'm the technical support manager. Uh, and today I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit about wastegates. So, wastegates are primarily to control boost pressure for your turbo. The, the main, I guess in the most literal sense, they are power robbers. They just divert pressure away from your turbine to control the shaft speed. Um, Wastegates in general, and in, I guess, just the typical sense for the, the last several years, they've been pneumatic. Um, we've done some things that we can talk about later, but these are traditionally what you're gonna see. They use a pneumatic reference that goes into the bottom half of the housing that lifts up a diaphragm when boost pressure is fed into the system. And what that does is it lifts up the valve inside and that diverts pressure away from the turbo itself to control boost pressure. So in regards to what these ports all are, um, ours has a few extra. We have these water ports for water cooling, so you can kind of disregard that for right now. But in the back, these are reference ports for your diaphragm. The diaphragm is, uh, it's hard to describe. Let me show you something. So this is a cutaway of our wastegate. Um, you'll see the diaphragm is this, this Nomex material here. And essentially what happens is when pressure is fed through this port, it goes underneath the diaphragm in the housing and pushes it up against a spring, which is rated for a predetermined spring rate or a predetermined PSI. So for instance, that spring is a three PSI spring. So when three PSI of pressure is fed into that lower housing, it'll then lift the valve along with exhaust pressure or drive pressure pushing the valve open. Now there's top ports as well. These top ports are there for more intricate control strategies. Normally, if you just want the most basic sense of boost control, you feed boost pressure to the bottom and then it opens at the predetermined spring rate. But if you add a boost controller, you can bleed off that signal to fool the wastegate into thinking it's not making as much pressure. And in a lot of scenarios, you can sometimes double or triple the spring rate inside of the wastegate. So what guys will do is they will feed pressure to both the top and bottom to counteract the movement of the diaphragm which in return gives you a little bit more control over how that valve moves. And in some of the more extreme versions of motorsports, we have a compressed gas gate. We flip the diaphragm upside down because some people will feed compressed air or CO2 into the housing. And that way they can control how that valve moves rather than having to depend on the reference below. So, the differences between internal and external, um, they're pretty obvious when you look at them physically. Um, an internal has an actuator housing with a rod coming out that pushes a bypass arm on the turbo to open up an actual bypass arm that's on the turbine housing. External, they are mounted on the actual turbo manifold and they are going to basically offer more surface area. So if you have an application that's making more horsepower, then you usually need to divert more exhaust away from the turbo. And there are some aftermarket turbos that have turbine housings that have a larger bypass for the actuator rod. But when you're going higher in performance, usually the next step is external. So when it comes to plumbing a wastegate, this side is the inlet. It's gonna push against this valve and along with the pressure acting with it, force it open to divert exhaust gases out the outlet of the wastegate. The outlet, it can go one or two ways. You can vent it to atmosphere, which would essentially sound like a cutout. It's better for performance. Um, and if you wanted to keep your car a little bit quieter, a lot of guys will recirculate this into the exhaust after the, uh, the turbine housing. And these are all, all these are V-band setups. 
Right, exactly. So pretty much anything from our 40 millimeter to the larger 60 millimeter, they're V-banded. Um, we still do a traditional two bolt flange, just like every other company usually will. Um, it's basically, we, if you wanted to upgrade to a V-band and still keep around this size, because sometimes you don't have to go bigger on a wastegate, we have the 40 millimeter versus the 38. So that would allow you to go V-band and make your life a little bit easier if you have to take off that wastegate. Now, can it hurt your performance if you go oversized? It can. So bigger doesn't always mean better. Um, there's a lot of variables that can affect what type of wastegate you should run and what size. Um, for instance, if you have a, a high horsepower application that's making really low boost, so let's say 1500 horsepower, twin turbo V8, and you want to try to leave the line at 7 PSI, you're going to need to divert as much as you can away from that turbo so you can regulate 7 PSI. Otherwise, you'll get creep. So if you go too small on that wastegate, then it's gonna just go straight past that wastegate into the turbine, and then you're gonna be wondering why you're making 15 PSI on a seven PSI spring. On the flip side, if you have an application that is high horsepower, high boost pressure, then you can get away with something smaller because that wastegate's gonna be doing less work. But the, the trade away is if you go on a bigger wastegate on an application that has higher horsepower, higher pressure, it might bleed off too much pressure inside your exhaust to drive that turbo properly, so it can sometimes result in a drop off and boost in the high RPMs. All right, so moving on, um, here at TurboSmart, we're kind of innovators of the boost control industry. Uh, we, we like to push the, the game past the limits, and two years ago, we released the first external wastegate uh, that's electronically controlled. This is our Powergate 60. We make them in multiple sizes, just our regular line, but with the motorized housing. This takes out the guesswork of springs, diaphragms, reference lines, leaks, anything that might mess up how your wastegate is working. And now it's all controlled through the ECU, which makes control and what you can do with that limitless. It's really down to how creative you are. So something new for us this year is we went away from the traditional poppet style where it's a 90 degree design and the valves underneath and we were like why don't we just flow straight through the wastegate and do a butterfly valve. So this is our straight gate 50. We won best new engineered and best performance racing product this year. Um, this is essentially a butterfly valve. Think of it as like a throttle body on your car but now it's able to be mounted to your exhaust manifold and this is now the highest flown wastegate on the market which was previously held by the 60 here so the the cool thing about these is like i said if if you're creative enough you can do whatever you want in terms of control let's say your manifold design is great your wastegate prioritization is great and you can get exhaust gases out if you do no prep racing or drag racing in general you could potentially leave the line naturally aspirated at zero psi and then shut your gate after your 60 foot or however you want it to operate and the same goes for this, um, but this one is just higher flowing. The, the flow of this is also a lot more linear, so it's a lot more predictable when you're tuning and when you're driving on the track. It's not just gonna come on and you just get a big surprise, you know? Um, in terms of control, when we first released these, the only ECUs that could control this was FuelTech, Alltech, MoTech, Cyvex, uh, and Mtron. But now, these guys that are running mega squirt factory harnesses, or sorry, factory ECUs, Holly, um, they can now run it through our black box here, which is a dual H bridge driver. It essentially converts a PWM signal that the ECU can understand, or you can do CAN bus protocol to make it work with your application. So you guys with A90s, you can now run an external wastegate and use the protocol from your internal wastegate on this. Um, these will be dropping next year. Straight gate will probably be shipping hopefully before the end of 2021. If not, you'll see it first quarter next year, but this is the future of boost control and we're gonna do all we can to keep pushing that limit. All right, so we are going to review what was said about wastegates, but first I'm gonna say thank you to Richard for taking the time to explain to us how wastegates work. So let's clap it for him and leave a like if you haven't already. So wastegates control the flow of exhaust going into the turbo, which directly affects boost potential. They can be internal or external to the turbo. Size does matter. And most are controlled pneumatically, but the latest vehicles use electronic controls. And with the new Turbo Smart Straight Gate, you can have complete control over how your boost kicks in. Which means if you wanted to, 
we could have a legitimate turbo button on the dash. And that's all I have for this video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the Rock King Uploads channel where Never Stop Learning is the goal and teamwork is encouraged. So until the next time, stay tuned and thanks for watching.